So if you can't tell by looking at the screen or if you don't know by looking at the screen um, or if you're not looking at the screen, we're going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons. So what we have here on the screen is an image of uh, apparently homosexual dwarves. Now, when I was a kid, I played D&D. I didn't know. Were there female dwarves? I didn't know. <laughs> it's kind of a mystery. Um, and there were even some legends written in some of the books. It's like, you know, dwarves spring fully formed right out of the earth. And I mean, the, the myth of the dwarf, the myth of the gnome, they're, they're the same creature in uh, medieval mythology is. I mean, according to the research I've done, maybe you have different research and you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. But uh, it's just a matter of language, Langu like, right? I mean, the word for for um, dog is not the same in in French as it is in Spanish, for example, right? So a difference in language means you're going to get a different name for the same thing. So, so we're talking about D&D &D and uh, how diverse it is now, how diverse it has become. Now, I will say one thing about these dwarves here in the image. One of them appears to be Hispanic, and the other one appears to be white. So that's interesting. Maybe the Hispanic one just has a tan, or maybe he's Greek, right, coming from a uh, European country. This is this is my big complaint about it. It's like, it's medieval European fantasy stuff, so pretty much everybody should be white or fantasy race that doesn't make any sense uh but i mean if you want to play however you want to play go ahead and play that way i'm not going to stop you if you want to if you want to have like hispanic orcs like what we saw right we saw the hispanic i, I don't know if you haven't been if you have not been following this there's the hispanic here you go we got the mexican orcs mexican orcs right here and this is a this is a huge complaint of mine again if you want to play like orcs are just they're just people and you can play Shadowrun all day long where orcs are just, they're just people. They have been, um, what is the dang word? <laughs> well, they've probably been oppressed. They have experienced prejudice. I don't, I can't remember the word I'm trying to think of here. Discrimination. They've, had, they've, they've experienced discrimination. They've been discriminated against, I'm sure. But I mean, if you're living in a world where, you know, everybody looks like me pretty much. Except for maybe there's some slight differences in the color of the, well, maybe some extreme differences in the color of your skin. And we're mad at each other because of that, or we target each other because of that. Then all of a sudden, not only there's a, is there a different color of skin that you have that you possess as an orc, you also look like some sort of animal-human hybrid and not a pretty one. Yeah, you're going to get more discrimination. That's just how it goes. But these are not orcs, right? If you want to say oh, oh, these, these are just humans with style features on their faces that's it really but if you want to say orcs are civilized and this is shadowrun is not the only game that said hey orcs are kind of good guys i think um sovereign stone did the same thing that's the larry elmore's game if you're not familiar with larry elmore who was famous for painting and drawing images for the dungeons and dragons series back in the 80s very talented artist let me, let me pull up an image of larry elmore real quick here because he is he's very good this is one of my favorite ones that he did we got what appears to be, I would call it a hill giant. It's very reminiscent of the hill giant that was in the Dungeons and Dragons monster manual. But it's too big to be a hill giant because hill giants are like, I don't know, 10 or 12 feet tall. And this thing looks like it's at least 18 feet tall. But um, either way, you got a giant and what appears to be a, a man who is dead or near dead and a woman casting a spell on him. So beautiful artwork, right? He's a very, very talented artist. Uh, Brom came along in the 90s and did a lot of work for D&D. For I'll show you Brahm too. This here is um, one of Brahm's paintings that I found inspirational. Not his best work. He's done a lot of really great artwork. I think technically he's he's a better artist from from a technical point of view, from ability to create form and volume and proportion than Elmore is, but I think Elmore has better vision. Elmore did a much more variety of work. He did all sorts of different genre. Obviously, in medieval fantasy, contained within that that one genre, he did a, a wide range of different types of artwork, whereas Brahm basically stuck to the macabre. This, what we see here with the Mexican orcs, it's not bad artwork, but it's not as good as Elmore or Brahm, <laughs> nor near as good as those two, either of those two. In fact, I wouldn't even, I mean, I'm not a painter by any stretch, 
the cover of my book is the first image I um, never digitally painted, really. It's considered a digital painting. I've, did, I've done plenty of illustration. But I would not I would not be happy putting this out for the public to see. Um, I would definitely feel ashamed and embarrassed to put this out as my artwork. But, and one thing I noticed about these orcs here is what's with all the falcons and hawks? I, these are hawks, I think. And they're not falcons. They're, these are all hawks. Why are they all of a sudden like, oh, we we're capable of like working with birds. That's our thing. Maybe that's going to be the official point of view of uh, of the orcs. They're good with, with horses and birds. Thing is, I mean, orcs in D&D come out of, directly out of Tolkien. And they rode wargs. They rode, they rode on giant dogs, giant wolves, whatever. And they were nasty creatures. And they were fodder for adventurers to slaughter. And I have no problem if you want to play an orc in your game. And I have no problem if you want to say orcs are good in your game. But we need something that is bad. The thing is, is they're making these... There was a conflation, like, you know, orc is coded for black. No, it's not. If you want to view orcs as, as black, okay. That's your that's your world. You do it however you want to. I'm not saying that you're wrong to do that. But there is a, a kind of a... Like I said, there's a coding that says, hey, look, orcs are bad. And they're coded for black, therefore blacks are bad. And I'm like, no, that's not how it works. Okay? If you feel that way, that's on you. If you feel that elves are bad, that's on you. If you feel anything, whatever. It, this is all fantasy stuff. It's all on you. This is make-believe. This is escapism. So you do it how you, you want to do Now, I do want to point out the, the oh, I got called the, the racist. I'm a racist. When I was playing in the last group that I played in, which was a long time ago now. I think it's been a couple of years because you can't find a good group here in California. I'm sure there are good groups. But they're already full, so I can't get into one. I, sa I said something about, yeah, I'm, I'm sure orcs are terrible bakers or something like that. Or I'm sure, like, so I, I ate something, it's like, oh, it tastes terrible. It tastes like an orc made it. And um, the GM looks at me, and, and it, some of the other players looked at me all of a sudden. The GM says, oh, well, that's racist. I'm sorry. How is that racist? Well, I see no reason to believe that an orc would be a bad baker. <laughs> um, well, seems to me that... Uh, Orcs, based on how they've historically been depicted, would not be opposed to eating rotten meat. Rotten meat doesn't taste that good to humans. So I don't think that orcs would be putting that much care into the flavor of the foods that they're making because they, they have probably fewer taste buds or taste buds that react differently to the foods. Thus, if things taste bad to a human, orc would be like, oh, that's fine. Tastes fine to me. Not only that, typically... Baking and cooking are intellectual skills, and orcs have always been depicted as having lower IQ, lower intelligence, lower wisdom. Always. So why would they be as good at that, as, at cooking and baking, as humans were? It has nothing to do with race, other than the fact that they happen to be stupid because of their race, on average. And it's okay to have a race that's stupider than humans. There's nothing wrong with that. Goblins, orcs, hobgoblins, ogres, they should all be less intelligent than humans on average uh, this is why they are evil right they don't have the intellectual ability to step back and go hey maybe we handle this a different way maybe we, we come at this for, with our words instead we're gonna they don't have that ability they, and instead they're gonna they're gonna fight first ask questions later they're barbaric in their nature and uh that's cool i played a, a character once who was an orc full blood orc the the humans were at war with the orcs Everybody else in my group was a human. I was the only orc. I want to play a character who was different. I wanted to play an orphan. He was an orphaned orc, and uh, he had been raised by humans. So he was civilized. He was less intelligent, yes, but he was fairly intelligent for an orc. He was bigger and stronger than humans, and that's what I wanted to play. That's what I liked. And that's how orcs should be. They should be bigger and stronger than humans, and they should be more aggressive than humans. They should not be settling down to farm the land and domesticate animals they should be hunting and killing to make their living that should be their primary form of sustenance is meat and how they go about getting that meat they don't care whether they steal it or they kill it that's what they they want and they might even go so far as to oh i don't know eat a human or two it's meat. They don't care. Whatever. So that's my thoughts on the orcs here. There's so much stuff to talk about with this. 
it's gone so far the diversity D D does not have to resemble the modern world it doesn't in fact it shouldn't if you want to play that way fine i'm not going to stop you but as the canon lore it should be very much based on and set in medieval european setting of some sort it's becoming more and more like masters of the universe type of setting which is cool i like masters of the universe but it's not DD. And I don't want the two to be the same thing. I want um, D&D to be D&D, medieval, European, fantasy. There's also Oriental Adventures. There's also al from the Middle East and Oriental Adventures from the Far East. That's fine. Those are, those are cool time periods, the medieval time period in Asia and in Europe. We could have all that. That's great. What was happening during the Middle Ages in Africa? What was happening during the Middle Ages in the Americas? Not as interesting of a time and to me, but maybe you find that that time period extremely interesting in those parts in those parts of the world. So okay, fine. You can make your own game and have your own set. You have your own game set there, or you can just play the dice six system, which allows you to do anything, and then you can have it, your game set wherever you want to, whenever you want to. I don't care. I'm not here to police how you play your game. I'm here to police the uh, st- stupidity we see coming out of Wizards of the Coast. So there was a video I came across. Here. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here you go. This is, uh, I don't know who this is. This is somebody talking about the new Dungeons & Dragons that's coming out this year. This is the largest player's handbook the game has ever had. Okay, I have to stop it already. Now, D&D goes full woke here, I'm sure, in this player's handbook. It's got to be diverse. It's got to resemble modern-day America. That's what it's got to do. Got to do it. All right, if you want to bring in a a whole bunch of different types of people to play the game and you think this is the way to go about doing it you're wrong it's not working clearly people are not as interested in the game as they were a few years ago you're losing interest you're losing players people are moving on to other games people are moving on to other things so this is the largest player's handbook ever made okay so i've written my game my role-playing game it's done i've written it it's less than 150 pages there's never been a player's handbook that's been that short and in my game You can play any kind of thing you want to play. If you want to play Dungeons and Dragons, play Dungeons and Dragons. If you want to play Star Wars, play Star Wars. If you want to play adventure cats from outer space that get crash landed on um, prehistoric Earth, fine. Play adventure cats from outer space that get crash landed on prehistoric Earth. So whatever you want to play, whatever you can uh, imagine, you can set the game in that setting with whatever kind of abilities you want to have available to the players and to the NPCs. Doesn't matter. That's how I set my game up. Why is this the biggest player's handbook ever in the history of Dungeons and Dragons? Because they have to keep adding more and more and more to make it diverse, more and more and more rules so that those rules can be broken by a given class because that that's, is what makes the class special. No, you don't add rules so, just so they can be broken. You keep the rules as simple as possible. You streamline as much as possible to make it as realistic as possible for the players. And then um, if they want to have an ability, they choose an ability certain you only get to choose so many abilities so this is what makes your character special D, the makers of D don't understand this concept they say oh we'll choose your class now choose your path oh you want to do another class okay choose that class and then choose that path and it's just it's just a mess it is just all over the place there's so many different rules you have to memorize so many different things you have to understand simplify it play one game that allows you to play anything gurps the hero system the die six system the omni system there are so many games out there that will let you play your own thing. You could sit back and just simply play a game this simply. Every player at the table has a single die. Whatever die you want to play with. The 20-sided die, the 6-sided die. I don't care. The 4-sided die. Whatever die you want to play with. The The game master's job is to tell a story. And then the characters react to that story. And if you want to do something and it's going to be difficult for you, the game master has you roll your die. And he rolls his die. And whoever rolls higher wins. Of course, in certain scenarios, it's, you're not really in a conflict against anything other than the environment. I want to jump over this ridge or over this gap in the ground. Okay, we'll roll your die, and I'll roll my die. Whoever rolls higher wins. If you roll low, lower than me, then you fail and you fall into the gap. Or you could just have the character roll a die and, and say you got to beat a 10, whatever. On a 10-sided die, that's going to be hard. <laughs> On a 12-sided die, it's going to be hard. On a 20-sided die, that's not too bad. You could make it that simple. This is about storytelling, about escapism. It's not about having a whole bunch of garbage rules that are going to get in the way of gameplay. 
D and D bogs down so fast now. The the fifth edition, I was playing with these guys. I'm like, I cannot play this. This game is. I don't understand the rules. There's always been too many rules in Dungeons and Dragons, too many. But there's so many more now in fifth edition, and who who knows how many there's going to be in this 2024. Obviously, if this is if this is the biggest player's handbook ever, there must be more rules. You don't need to make it this complicated. It's it's very very simple. Anyway, let's get back to the video and see if there's any gems in here. I mean, it's a long video. We're not going to watch the whole thing. We're not going to watch very much of it. It has been rebuilt from the ground up. It is filled with new options as well as returning options that have been refined, reimagined, rebalanced. And the whole book has also been restructured to aid reference at the table, to make it easier than ever before to create a character. And we have also packed it with enough new options that even people who have been playing this game for a decade will find whole new ways to customize their characters, you know, between the different class features, the subclass options, the new feats, the new equipment options, the new crafting rules, the new spells, the revised spells. You combine all of that and this is like having the game that you are already playing yeah. completely like glowed up. Uh, uh huh. Like I said, a bunch of worthless garbage. He just said it there. It's like the game you're already playing glowed up. Oh, the, the game I was already playing made harder, made more complicated? Great. Just what I wanted. Just what I wanted. I want more complexity in the games that I'm playing. No, I want more simplicity. I want it to be as simple as possible while remaining as realistic as possible. And some people talk about, oh, they, they challenge me on the, oh, why do you need to be realistic? Look, I'll, I'm trying to understand how this relates to reality. I'm trying to simulate reality. If I want to play something that's completely off the wall crazy, there's a million different games out there that I could play that have absolutely nothing to do with reality, right? There's there's board games galore that have nothing at all to do with reality. You just roll dice and you move your thing around a, the board. It's, it's just a matter of, okay, you, will, you rolled high here, you rolled low there, whatever you got to do to win the game. Or I can play cards. A deck of cards is just, they're basically just numbers and colors and shapes. That's it. And you win by doing different things with those numbers, colors, and shapes. It's, it's very abstract. So that's why I want role-playing games to simulate reality more. Because so that's what the point of them is, in my opinion. To simulate reality as much as possible. I don't need to go any more into this video. We watched like a minute of it. Let's see about some more of this diversity. Because there are some things I want to say about that. So I want to look at this right here. This is an image of the barbarian. Uh, this looks very much like Vox Machina, doesn't it? The barbarian in Vox Machina. And nothing against Vox Machina. Nothing against this particular barbarian, but where are you getting your ideas from, wizards? Where are you pulling your inspiration from? And why are you making it obvious? Why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense to me. What do I know? We got this here, which is pretty extreme diversity. You got an elf in a wheelchair. Now, nothing against if that's what you want to play. But again, why is this sort of like canon D&D? &D? Why are we making this canon D&D? &D? Why, why do we have to have it? Why can't you just allow players to make up the world that they want to play in? No, you have to have it in the game. I, my guess is this new D&D is for people who do not have imagination. Everything has to be spelled out for them. Everything has to be shown to them. Look, you could play an elf with a gun in a wheelchair. That's medieval fantasy. That's cool. No, that's not medieval fantasy. If you want to play that way, go ahead. I used to do all sorts of crazy stuff like that when I was a kid. And I played D&D. And I had bows that, were, that looked like guns and stuff and, and all sorts of weird stuff. But... That's not uh, what I think should be canon in a medieval fantasy adventure. So they did this with the orcs to challenge the... Um, somebody did this. I don't know who did this. To challenge the Mexican orcs that we see on the uh, official Dungeons & Dragons stuff. And uh, somebody said that they prefer this to the uh, Mexican orcs. I think this is even more insulting, though. <laughs> these uh, are clearly... We've got another one of these, too. Let me, let me pull up the other one here. These are clearly hillbilly orcs, right? This is a, this is, um, a, a play on what appears to be a play on the Beverly Hillbillies, right? And this one here is, well, we often see hillbillies depicted as banjo playing, sitting around a fire. I um, don't know if how accurate that is, um, how many people who live in the mountains play banjos. Maybe it's pretty accurate. But typically, hillbillies have been stereotyped as being less intelligent, less civilized. So how is this any better depicting the orcs this way than it is depicting them as Mexican? Not saying that hillbillies are less intelligent, less civilized, just saying that that's how they've been depicted. And also inbred, which makes sense. I mean, considering the kind of lifestyle that they would live, that they, you know, you don't have many options. It's like, 
we got one one neighbor lives a mile away on that mountaintop over there how i mean what are you gonna do so i can understand why that would happen when you isolate when you isolate groups of people and breeding happens a lot let's see what else oh oh got this i gotta look at this right here this is this is something special if i can get my mouse to work there we go we got else this one i'm like i don't even know what you people are doing here so we got a green asian elf I don't know if that's offensive to any Asian people, but she clearly has an Asian face, long flowing hair, which is also something that is, I think, associated with Asian women to some degree. And then she has green skin. I don't know if that's offensive, whatever. You got what appears to be a white elf. Okay. Oh, they're holding hands with the green Asian elf. Does that mean they're lesbian? I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe that's code for lesbian. I don't know. You got a purple elf. You got an African elf. You got a purple elf with an albino elf that has green hair. And they apparently have a child together that's also albino. I don't know what's going on here because elves were, there was always, there were a set number of elves, a set different number of types of elves in Dungeons and Dragons, depending on the setting you're in. In Dark Sun, for example, there was one type of elf. It was the elf. That's it. <laughs> you could play an elf. All right. Okay. There's one elf. In uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, I believe that the elves broke down when all was said and done in um, Greyhawk or Faerun, which is uh, Forgotten Realms, right? They believe they had five elves. So they had the dark elves, which are black skinned. That gold, gray, aquatic, and um, high elves. I believe those were the, all five of them. None of those are depicted here. No. Gold, gray. Gold and high elves were often said to be the same thing. It was wild elves that were the other ones. So gold, gray, wild, and aquatic. And then, of course, dark elves. We didn't, we, they didn't have African elves. They didn't have purple elves. And this is two, these are two different shades of purple. I imagine this one back here in the back is supposed to be a dark elf because it's closer to black skin. And then this one here is a purple elf, whatever the purple elves is, I don't know what they are. No elves had green skin, no elves had purple skin, but um, this is what they wanna do now. Why Why are you changing this? Doesn't make any sense. DD can be anything you want it to be, is what they're saying, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that, but why are you making it ingrained in the rules? It's like, oh, look, DD is anything you want it to be. You know, just show us elves as they are described and, and make them a standard. Don't just, oh, you can have orange elves. Oh, you can have pink elves. Oh, you can have whatever color elves you want. Why? What, what does that do for anybody? No, you should have a set number of elves and they should have, for your setting, you should have a set number of elves, whatever the setting of the official setting of D&D is, whatever it is. So these are the elves. This is what they look like. Don't just willy nilly throw elves in there or throw different colored elves in there, whatever. I don't know if this one's gonna be anything too spectacular. It just shows some diversity here. Yeah, you got an Asian elf here with pale skin. You got, is that a, I'm not sure if, I think it's a dwarf, an African dwarf. They're riding on the back of what appears to be a white dragon with, um, I don't know, some sort of tiefling who has light skin. And I, I think this is might be a human down here, a ranger. Is that a ranger or is it a thief? I think it's a thief. And you got some sort of human barbarian character. So, yeah, whatever. Now, this one here gets it, not that one. What happened to the other one? I don't know why it's not coming up. Let me pull it up here. This one here gets interesting to me. This one is, um, this apparently is the cover of the player's handbook. I don't know what these other two books are. These are the core rule books. The cover of the player's handbook, it doesn't have a white male on it. It has um, a male in, what appears to be a male anyway, in full armor. So we can't tell what their race is. There's a white female and there are African females on here. Like, I don't know why, but there is, okay, whatever. Especially the African elf, that's not a thing, okay. There are African humans all over the place, right? We got them all on Earth here. Uh, then we have this other book here, which looks like it might be like a monster manual book, is what I'm guessing. But then there's, you know, the African female and what appears to be a white male. I don't, I'm not sure they're off in the distance, so you can't really see them that well. What's more interesting to me, though, is this other book cover here. Because this does show a white male. It shows Warduke. Warduke was, the action, was an action figure. He was the evil fighter for the action figures that we had back in the 80s for Dungeons & Dragons. So the only white guy, of course, on the cover of the core rule books, he's, um, he's evil. We can say for sure that he's a white guy anyway. We can't, I mean, this guy here, I'm, what I, I'm calling the monster manual, I'm not sure if it's, um, if he's white or not. He looks like he could be, but and he, he could be evil too, because monsters will attack evil things too. It doesn't matter. Evil people, they'll, they'll attack them. But we know that Warduke is evil. He was, he, that's what it said on the, on the card that he was packaged in. It said evil fighter. Yep. You couldn't have a, you know, a black guy on there being evil or a Hispanic woman being evil or an Asian homosexual being evil. No, no, can't do any of that. It's got to be a white guy, of course. 
And then we come to this last image here that I want to share, and that's not it. I don't know why it's pulling up the wrong images when I go through this. It's weird. Here we go. Look, you know, quest from the infinite staircase. Look, apparently it's all about lesbian relationships. Lesbian elf. Uh, well, the one girl is an elf. I think the other girl is supposed to be a human, and she looks Asian, Eastern Asian. Yep, that's what we need. Our D&D. The pushing of more homosexuality, which we uh, you can we can say with confidence, this is a social contagion at this point. I mean, come on. Um, who you love is your business, but forcing people, you know, can underhandedly encouraging people to do this. What are we coming to, basically? What is this world coming to? We can't be responsible adults anymore and have uh, relationships with heterosexual relationships that work. You know, we can't, not, not in the United States anyway. So it's just more of the, the woke propaganda being pushed out there for everybody. So, you know, this is D&D. If you want to get involved in D&D, go ahead and do it. I would don't recommend it. D&D is like, it's a joke. I, I've mentioned other games to play, so many other games that are better than D&D. D&D is like the worst role-playing game ever made. I wouldn't even bother with it, but it's, for whatever reason, the most popular. The rules are so stupid in D&D. Just seriously, don't even... If you want to play a game, plenty of other games to play that are so much better. Shadowrun is a great game. Play Shadowrun. If you want to play Medieval Fantasy, it's set in modern times. Well, it's set in the future, actually. So you get the best of both worlds. You get magic plus high-tech awesome stuff, cybernetics. And you get elves and orcs and trolls and dwarves and humans. And you can just get into street battles all day long so anyway that's all i got for this time thank you for watching don't play D, &D and, I, and i'll see you in the next video